Good day, good day everyone. Uh, so we meet again. Right, so today I want us to, to cover assets and basis, um, which is quite an important chapter. Um, maybe let me make a disclaimer to this. Uh, assets and basis is quite a voluminous chapter. It has quite a lot of detail in it. Um, so I will not, in my attempt, try to be as exhaustive in my approach to it. Um, there's information or there's uh, things that we must know from grade 11. I'll try to just go back a little bit to it. Um, but what I want us to do is just to simply move on uh, from uh, towards the grade 12 stuff very swiftly. And what I'm, I'm going to do in my attempt is that I'm going to make sure that I give you everything that you need, uh, you know, just to master the grade 12 syllabus. However, so what I will do is um, I'll break the lessons on assets and basis into different parts. So I will not cover everything during this lesson, um, but I will also do my best to make sure that I provide another lesson uh, on assets and basis. All right. So if you are ready, uh, I'm also ready. I'm ready to go. And by the way, uh, for those of you who have not subscribed, where have you been? <laughs> We've been learning on this channel and um, there's some more lessons you can uh, benefit from. OK, just make sure to hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you need to get in touch with us, my email address is available on my bio and you can get in touch with me. Otherwise, just throw a comment. Let me know how this lesson goes. OK, right. Shall we go? OK, so first of all, uh, when we start with assets and basis, um, we're going to limit our scope to two theories that we're going to do. OK, the first one is um, referred to as the Arrhenius theory. Uh, OK, there I'm writing the name wrong there. OK, I will not attempt to give you the historic background. You can read that for yourself. OK, so that's the Arrhenius theory. And there's the Lowry Bronsted uh, theory of assets and basis. Okay, so it's named after two people. All right, so um, in this case, so want to know, first of all, right? So when we talk about an asset, according to the Arrhenius theory, okay, which is where we're going to spend most of our time today, right? We want to know um, what would be the definition of an asset uh, according to Arrhenius, okay? So Arrhenia simply uh, just said an acid is a substance that ionizes in water to give us hydronium ions. OK, so H plus or we can use H3O plus. Just please note uh, for now and in future that H plus and H3O plus are exactly the same thing. OK, the only difference is that here we've shown that the hydrogen ion okay the hydronium ion is actually embedded onto the h2o molecule okay so it doesn't just float around on its own uh it's, it's actually on h2o so that's why we have that h3o plus okay right so a, an acid is a substance okay that dissolves in water and therefore um, gives us this hydronium ion, this H plus ion. Okay, so that's according to the Arrhenius theory. So when we look at the base, however, what Arrhenius said is that a base is a substance that dissociates. Okay, so this one ionizes, this one dissociates. Uh, if you ask me, you know, it's more or less the same thing. Uh, but it's a substance that dissociates um, in water or in, or in solution, okay, to give us hydroxide ions okay so um, you can simply look at a an acid as a substance that kind of donates okay hydronium ions and a base as a substance that kind of donates okay a hydroxide note the difference in the terminology hydronium okay that's h3o plus and hydroxide okay that's oh minus okay right so those are the substances that uh, we are referring to when we are talking about acids and bases yeah let me try and focus my camera a little bit okay so essentially when we look at the arrhenius theory 
every time that we take an acid plus a base and i want you to please note this because we're going to talk about titration in just a little bit right anytime we take an acid plus a base okay what it will give us is that it gives us a salt okay now, when we say salt, we not we don't mean table salt, but it is part of uh, what we also get. By the way, we get a salt, okay, and we also get H2O water, okay, right? I'm going to show you just a couple of examples just now. And by the way, we're going to use this um, uh, quite a bit when we do titration, okay, which I'm going to show you in a in a few, okay. Just remember that uh, every time that we look at an acid, it will donate the H plus, okay? A base will donate the OH minus, and note this, the H and the OH, that's what gives us the H2O, okay? Right, just to talk a little bit, of course, we're going to, uh, we, we said we're not going to really spend time a lot on the lowry bronsted theory, but I would still want you to know um, what it entails, okay? So, uh, lowry bronsted theory, uh, an acid, according to this theory, and we're going to look at it in the, um, in, in the videos to come, right? So, he said, okay, or rather they said, okay? Right, an acid is simply a substance. Now, please, I want you to note, so according to the lowry bronsted theory, an acid, note, it's nothing different, okay? It's a substance that donates hydronium ions when in solution, okay? So an acid is an H plus donor, hydronium ion donor, when in solution okay or it's a substance that ionizes in solution to give us a high concentration or a concentration of hydronium ions right but now the difference uh, if you note so between this and that there isn't really much of a difference okay but the difference really comes in when we now have to look at the base and what is the difference because here a base is simply a hydronium ion acceptor so the difference is the reaction here so one donates an h plus and another one accepts so this process we call we call by the way protolysis um hydronium ion uh, can also be used interchangeably with the proton okay uh, the reason for that is because the hydrogen atom has got uh, one electron and one proton okay in its nucleus and once you take away the electron, it becomes H plus, and the only thing that remains in the nucleus is um, uh, the, the, the proton. So in this case, we say, well, this guy is simply a proton donor, okay? So it's a proton donor. That's an acid, okay? And whereas this uh, a base is a proton acceptor, okay? So that's the fundamental difference. Uh, between the two, okay? So, according to the uh, uh, um, the lowry bronsted theory, one donates and another one accepts. Um, just to show you where this may be applicable, I'll, I'll come back to this in just a little while. So, this is applicable, by the way, mostly when they give you, say for argument's sake, you've got HCl, okay? Let's take, uh, that's an acid, and I react it with H2O, okay? So usually that's a reversible reaction, okay? So what I will get is H3O plus, okay? Plus Cl minus. Now please, I want you to stay with me uh, uh, just a little bit, okay? So I want you to see where the importance, what the importance of this is. So if you look at this reaction, you've got hydrochloric acid starting on one side as hydrochloric acid okay okay so it starts out as hcl and what does it become when it goes on the other side it becomes cl minus can you see that right so what happened to hcl to end up as cl minus so in this case what did it do it must have donated it must have given away its h plus to become cl minus so according to this it donated an h plus so therefore it becomes an acid okay 
right? So if I look at H2O, it started out as H2O. What did it become when it, be it gets to the other side? It becomes H3O plus. So what happened to H2O to become H3O plus? It became or it must have accepted an H plus, right? And therefore had now uh, three hydrogens. So in this case, it's accepting an H plus. So it is a base. Okay. So um, if you take the reverse reaction, okay. So now we start with H3O plus. All right. It started as H3O plus. And what does it become when it gets to the other side? It becomes H2O. So it means what happened to H3O plus to get to the other side, right? Uh, it must have donated an H plus. So in this case, it is, uh, sorry, um, it is an acid. Okay. So this guy is an acid. It's an H plus donor, right? Cl minus starts out as Cl minus again, right? And what does it become when it gets to the other side? Of course, it becomes HCl, right? Okay, so what happened to Cl minus to become HCl? It must have accepted, so therefore it becomes a base. Okay, according to that definition, it is a base. Now, please, I want you to note something quite important here. Normally, under this theory, we will then ask you uh, uh, the following. Okay, identify the lowry bronsted uh, acid base conjugate pair. So that's where they normally ask you about conjugate pairs, right? I want you to note. So the conjugate pair will always be between the acid on the one side of the equation of the reaction, right? And the, you always pair it with the base on the other side. I'm going to make it quite easy for you in just a few. So HCl is an acid, so I have to pair it with the base on the other side. What's the base on the other side? It's Cl minus, right? So in this case, it means I'm going to pair HCl with Cl minus. So that's the first conjugate pair, right? So that's HCl and Cl minus, okay? All right, and I want you to note here again. Acid on the one side, I pair it with the base on the other side. Okay, so in this case, there's my acid base conjugate pair, right? So in this case, I know another conjugate pair will be H3O plus and H2O. So that's another conjugate pair. By the way, they like these questions, uh, particularly for the multiple choice section. Okay, so uh, just know how to do that, right? But uh, let me just show you in a very simplified way uh, how you can identify acid-base conjugate pairs. So the acid-base conjugate pair will always be the substances that kind of look similar in the reaction. And the only difference between them is just an H plus, okay? Or and just an H. Look at this. Can you see that these look similar, right? What's the difference between them? Just an H. Can you see, right? Um, H3O and H2O, these look similar, right? Uh, and what's the difference between them? Just another H. Can you see? So in this case, uh, you can actually just identify them easily that way. You know what I want to do? Perhaps let me just give you another one that would um, uh, kind of uh, solidify, you know, your understanding of this principle. Okay, let's take another uh, substance. Okay. And we're going to come back to this Arrhenius theory uh, in just a few. So let's take, for instance, let's take uh, NH3, all right? And I react it with H2O again, right? And what I get there is NH4 plus, okay, plus OH minus. Okay, I hope I can fit that into the shot. Okay, so NH3 plus H2O, NH4 plus an OH minus, right? So I want to identify my acid-base conjugate pairs, right? So um, if you follow the second method that I showed you, the easy one, okay? Well, it should be simple. It you All you'll just simply say is that, okay, um, substances that look similar, all right, in this reaction, it's NH3 and NH4 plus, and that you you would be correct in saying that, okay? So NH3 and NH4 plus. Sorry about that. So that's NH4 plus. So that's my acid-base conjugate pair, right? 
okay and then what uh, which one is another one um so and um which one is a, an acid based conjugate pair you write it's h2o and oh minus okay so you'll notice that because i've got those two they are exactly the same h and oh but the difference is that this one has got two hydrogens whereas this one has got only one again that looks similar the difference is that the one has got um three hydrogens and the one has got four so the difference between them is just an h plus okay so those are acid base conjugate pairs but let's see uh, let's go back to this method okay so so that you can identify which one is the acid which one is the base and the other way around right now you always start so this is nh3 what does it become when it goes to the other side it becomes nh4 plus what happened to nh3 to end up as nh4 plus and you would imagine it must have gained it must have accepted okay a proton h plus in order to become nh4 so in this case what does it become it is a base so nh3 is a base why because it accepted an h plus and became n um and became nh4 plus all right and then um uh, h2o it started as h2o and what does it become when it gets to the other side it becomes oh minus can you see so in this case i start with h2o and it becomes oh minus what happened to h2o to become h2 uh, oh minus it must have donated an h plus okay it had two now it has one so in this case uh, if it's a proton donor therefore it must be an acid okay so this guy is an acid all right and then um going back again we start with nh4 plus okay what does it become when it gets to the other side it becomes nh3 right so in this case nh4 started as uh, nh4 and it becomes nh3 so what did this guy do he must have donated the h plus to become nh3 so in this case we know that guy is there acid okay and um oh minus starts as oh minus but what does it become when it gets to the other side it becomes h2o so what happened to this guy to become h2o he must have accepted so as a result it is a base just to confirm what we said there we said which ones are our acid base conjugate pairs you always take the acid on the one side base on the other side acid on the one side base on the other side right so in this case what do we have we've got a base here we must pair it with that acid there on the other side see so we've got an acid here we must pair it with the base on the other side and, ha and that's how we end up with nh3 as a base okay uh, nh4 plus as our acid so that's our pair okay and then we have h2o and oh minus as another pair all right so i hope that kind of makes sense to you right so as i said i'm not going to stay too much on this side but i at least appreciate the fact that um you now understand how to do those acid base conjugate pairs right so what i want us to do is i want us to stay a little bit on this side and we're going to talk about titration in a few right and uh talking about titration remember um that is where acids and bases actually that's the reason why we have acid and base reactions because um the only solution uh, to acids which if you remember in grade 11 we know that acids are quite corrosive right and because they are corrosive nothing else can neutralize an acid except a base and that's why we are studying this section okay so uh, that's why we want to know uh, how much acid we need in order to neutralize a base now let's take a few examples here so say for argument's sake i take hydrochloric acid okay all right um and i react it with a base sodium hydroxide so remember in this case uh, these guys give us uh a salt so an acid plus a base gives me a salt so i know i'm going to have h2o there right so it's going to give me a salt it's h2o um 
um, and whatever is left I need to knit together so my salt there would be NaCl okay and then plus H2O right now ladies and gents the most important thing when it comes to these reactions is always to make sure that it is balanced now at this point in grade 12 you probably will be given the reactions okay you probably will be given um, a balanced reaction why because what we expect of you is just simply to be able to use them okay so we expect you to be able to use it um, in a sense that uh, you'll see in just a few when we do titration so look at this we've got HCl and uh, we've got sodium hydroxide it gives us a salt NaCl and it gives us um, uh, water right now if you look at this we want to check is it balanced so let's start so hydrogen and another hydrogen there we've got two on the left we've got two on the right hand side okay and then note we've got chlorine one chlorine so one chlorine there one sodium one sodium one oxygen and one oxygen so um, it seems like we are fine on this one now please i want you to note once you know that it is balanced okay right so what does that mean it means for every one hydrochloric acid that's a coefficient there there's a one there there's one sodium hydroxide that we need and as a result it just simply means that for every one there's one that's the ratios that you need so you can just forget about the right hand side all we need is this you'll see how we apply that in just a few okay right let's take another reaction um, by the way, we don't expect you to memorize or remember these reactions uh, per se. You know, um, I often get uh, questions from learners. Yeah, but how, how do I know what the product is? Please, for now, uh, please don't focus on that. For the exam, we probably will give you, uh, if we need you to apply that, we probably will give you uh, these reactions and just expect you to know how to uh, apply um, the process or the calculations on titration so uh, take another example let's take another acid so h2so4 okay that's sulfuric acid okay uh, sorry to just jump in there and just give you the acids um, um, probably by now uh, from grade 11 you would have known which ones are the acids and which ones are the are, are the bases right so we've got h2so4 and um, which is an acid sulfuric acid and let's react it say for argument's sake with potassium hydroxide okay which is our base in this case so we know an acid plus a base will give us a salt so in this case our salt we know we'll have h2o right uh, oh and an h from there so what we get on the other side is potassium sulfate so k2so4 plus h2o now i want you to please note in this case um, this is not balanced okay i'll just make an example for you there okay so uh, you'll see you've got two uh, hydrogens plus one there which is three you only have two on the other side right um, i'm not going to waste a lot of time on the balancing of this reaction okay right so um, i'm just going to show you quickly uh, what we're going to do so what i normally do i just check this salt here so i've got two potassium there so let me just to uh, put a two there right and what it's done now uh, my potassiums are enough okay and the only thing now that is still missing are my hydrogens can you see i've got uh, two plus another two now on the left hand side and I've got only two there so I've got four on the left and I've got only two on the right so what I'll do to balance this is just put a two there and so that makes this uh, quite balanced okay so now I know that a reaction between uh, sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide all right for every one of this I get two of those and you can forget about the right hand side well, as soon as you're balanced okay the one thing that we need okay uh, will be this here these coefficients here that I've actually written on the left hand side okay right now um, so what I want to quickly do is skip over to talking about titration look you can look at uh, as many examples as you want um, uh, in terms of these kind of reactions 
um, but what I want us to do is just quickly jump into the application. How are we going to use this uh, in theory? Okay, right. So let's jump into just one question that I want to do with you. And then I think um, we would have achieved what we want to uh, for today. So let's take this uh, simple uh, um, question. So what we want to do is to talk a little bit about uh, uh, titration. So first of all, um, I won't really be exhaustive in the procedure around titration, but uh, just to talk about what exactly are we trying to achieve when we are titrating or when we are, yeah, when we are um, uh, doing the experiment on titration. What we're trying to do is to determine the concentration of an unknown substance, acid or base, right? So say for argument's sake, you pull out a bottle of vinegar, you know, from uh, the cupboard and you don't know, you know that uh, vinegar contains acetic acid or uh, what you call um, ethanoic acid, right? But you don't know what the amount or what the concentration of acetic acid is in that bottle of vinegar. So what you do is you're going to prepare a standard solution. What is a standard solution? It's a solution with a known concentration. So you'll take something else that you know, perhaps, perhaps uh, something like, uh, um, um, you know, bicarbonate of soda. That's a known base, right? And then you prepare a, you know, just a, a solution of it. Uh, you would know how much amount you put of the um, uh, bicarbonate of soda. And as a result now, uh, what you can do is try to um, get the two to react with one another until you get to what we call the, uh, the end point. Okay, This is when the acid and the base would completely have neutralized each other. And how would you know that point? Um, you know, you put an indicator and when the indicator changes color, then you know that you've reached uh, that uh, end point, right? This is when the, um, you know, the, the, the concentration or rather we, we say that the number of moles of the acid, okay, uh, and the base, right, would have completely neutralized each other, right? So I want us to look at a typical example uh, of such a reaction, right? So we are titrating two things this time. We are titrating a solution of sodium hydroxide, okay? We know the volume of it, which is 25 cubic centimeters. We know the concentration of it, okay? Which is 0 0.5 moles per cubic decimeters, right? And we're trying to neutralize hydrochloric acid, okay? Uh, of a volume of 50 cubic centimeters, right? And um, we want to find out. If 25 cubic centimeters uh, of sodium hydroxide will neutralize all of this 50 cubic centimeters, then how much acid? What is the concentration uh, of our acid? So this is what I want us to do. So when we get these type of questions, okay, this would be a typical grade 11 question, okay? Uh, we can find it in grade 12. Uh, obviously, it will have other things um, uh, included there, right? So then what we do is that um, they gave us 25 cubic centimeters of 0 0.5 solution of sodium hydroxide is used to neutralize 50 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid solution with an unknown concentration, right? So we know the two things that are involved in the titration. We know that we are reacting hydrochloric acid, okay? It is reacting with sodium hydroxide. So the first thing that you're going to have is I want to know how do these react with one another. As I said, in grade 12, we'll expect um, uh, by then, I mean, we, we would give you these reactions. Okay. So in this case, what did we have? We said we get sodium chloride plus H2O, isn't it? So you wouldn't have to figure this out on your own. Uh, by the way, even in grade 11, we would have given you the reaction. All right. Now, the thing that we need to always do is check the reaction. Is it balanced? So let's check for every one. So that's one hydrogen, one hydrogen. That's two uh, on the right hand side. That's two on the left. One chlorine. There's one chlorine there. Okay. One sodium, one sodium. 
one oxygen and one oxygen so those are actually um, quite balanced so what do we need we only need to now find out uh, in this case so we know for every one there's one isn't it okay so now we know how they react with one another. We know their stoichiometric ratios, right? So one is to one. It is completely balanced. So we know what actually is going on. Now, ladies and gents, all that we simply do in titration, when we know that the, co the solutions involved completely neutralize each other, okay? We have to have that as a condition when we know that they completely neutralize each other right so what we are simply going to do is now use our formula and the formula is as simple as follows it says c a v a over c b v b is equals to n a over n b okay and this, by the way, comes from, um, you know, the, 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 the solution or rather the, the formula for concentration. Concentration is number, uh, number of moles divided by volume. So when you rearrange that, number of moles would be concentration times volume, right? And by the way, not that it matters which one is the A, which one is the B, okay? Uh, some use this to, uh, to, to designate that A is the acid and B is the base. It really doesn't matter right if i decide to call this a and i decide to call this b right let's see what information do we have about a what do we know about hydrochloric acid remember we don't know what the concentration is so it means that ca is actually unknown can you see that all right and what about uh, uh, the volume of it did they give me the volume of the uh, acid yes they said it's 50 cubic centimeters so it means i know what va is the volume of the acid is 50 cubic centimeters okay right now let's talk about the b okay uh, sodium hydroxide what did they actually provide me with right they told me the concentration of the base okay the concentration of my base there Okay, 0 0.5 moles per cubic decimeters. Okay, moles per cubic decimeters. All right, sorry, I should put a dot there, minus 3. Okay, and the volume of the base, okay, my uh, B, they said they used 25 cubic centimeters. Okay, so as a result, what do we have? In this case, all that we're simply going to do is say, all right, let's put that in that equation there now please i want you to note ladies and gents you are under no obligation when you use this formula you don't need to convert we know that uh, volume we're supposed to use cubic decimeters isn't it right but you can actually forego that when you use that uh, this uh, that formula there why because both of them are in the same unit for as long as they are in the same unit you don't need to actually convert them okay right but if one of them of course is in cubic centimeters and the other in cubic decimeters you might need to convert the other okay so now we're going to say all right what's my ca the concentration of the acid is unknown so i'm going to leave that as ca multiplied by the volume of the acid that's 50 we said we didn't need to convert that right and then concentration of the base that's 0 0.5 okay multiplied by the volume of the base okay i'm given that as 25 that's cubic centimeters as i said to you because both of them are in cubic centimeters i didn't need to convert now where do i get my na and nb ratio remember we said these ones are the a this one is the a this one is the b so it means that what is my ratio for na it's this ratio over there so my ratio is one you see why it was important for me to get the balance formula right and what about my nb right what's my ratio there it's also one okay so as a result na over b uh, uh, and b uh, it's one over one right so all that's going to happen now is that i'm just simply going to cross multiply i'm going to say ca times 50 times one so i'm cross multiplying okay uh, ca times 50 times uh, one that's going to be 50 ca 
all right that's the concentration of my acid so 0 0.5 multiplied by 25 that should give us 12.5 or times 1 and that gives us 12.5 and all that we simply do you're going to divide both sides by 50 there okay that cancels that and we say 12.5 divided by 50 and what do we get we get a concentration of 0 0.25 moles per cubic decimeters okay right so we get a concentration of 0 0.25 moles per cubic decimeters right i hope that makes sense right so that's how we're going to um, uh, tackle the titration question okay right um, I think I want us to take another one the last one and I think we're going to end it there and then we're going to pick up the lesson obviously talking about the Lowry Bronsted theory uh, next time let's take another question right let's take this question um, it says in a titration reaction uh, a solution with the concentration of 0 0.028 moles per cubic decimeters of potassium hydroxide that's koh is used to neutralize 30 cubic centimeters of a 0 0.06 uh, moles per cubic centimeters uh, solution of sulfuric acid right so now we need to know how much of the potassium hydroxide solution in cubic decimeters would be required to neutralize the acid okay so note by the way we need to note that uh, we are talking about a titration here so we are talking about a situation where we are neutralizing the acid and the base right so we said the first thing that you're going to do note what are the substances involved in this reaction okay so we note okay it's going to be potassium hydroxide it's reacting with sulfuric acid right so let's write down the reaction so we know it's potassium hydroxide so that's koh plus h2so4 right okay and we know what we're going to get on the other side it's a uh, potassium sulfate so that's k2so4 right and i know i often get this question uh, people say well how do you know that it's going to be k2 here right please just remember that potassium is in group number one so uh, usually it only has one valent electron right whereas the sulfate ion okay this guy here has got a uh, um, a, a two minus right uh, so it's it's got um, an oxidation number rather of two minus so in this case um, obviously you need two of these uh, to react with one of them but that's another uh, study for another day right so in this case it's k2so4 plus h2o remember we said an acid plus a base will always give us a salt and water right so that's our salt that's our water by the way i want you to please note we said we are probably going to give you these uh, for grade 12 we don't require you to remember it we're going to give that to you and uh, what we just need to make sure of is that it's balanced and by the way most of the time it's given to you in in balanced form right so remember that that's two potassium that's only one there so i'm going to put a two there and uh, that balances out my potassiums sulfate uh, should be okay there and my hydrogens now i've got two plus another two which is four so i'm going to put that two there now ladies and gents i want you to note once you've done this you make sure that it's a, a balanced reaction or by the way it will be given to you in balanced form all that you are concerned with are those stoichiometric coefficients there's a two there okay obviously here there should be a one right so now let's look at it once again okay if you want to maintain which one is the acid which one is the base that's really completely up to you uh, otherwise it really doesn't make any difference which one you call a uh, which one you call b right if I decide this is going to be my A, this is going to be my B, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay, right. Now I want you to note, what do we know about potassium hydroxide? Okay, do we know the concentration of it? Yes, they gave us the concentration. Okay, we know that's 0 0.028. Okay, 
right i'll just avoid writing the si units there if you don't mind so that i don't run out of space okay and then uh what else do i know about potassium hydroxide well they said um uh, um uh, Right. So, so they didn't tell me the volume of it. In fact, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we don't know what volume of potassium hydroxide would be required to neutralize the amount of acid that we are given. So in this case, we've got sulfuric acid. So we said, OK, the concentration. OK, that's our B now. This is now going to be 0 0.06. OK. And then. Uh, what about the volume of the base? Okay, so we know the volume thereof is going to be 30 cubic centimeters. Okay, right. And then all that we're simply going to do, ladies and gents, is use our titration reaction. Okay, uh, um, formula ra rather. So we're going to simply say, okay, we know CAVA over CBVB. Okay. And this is going to be Na over Nb, right? Now notice, okay, we said our Ca value, that's 0 0.028, okay, that's our concentration multiplied by, I'm going to leave these in uh, cubic centimeters, okay? So the volume of my acid is unknown, okay? Uh, sorry, the volume of my base rather is unknown. Okay, so concentration of the um, acid, that's Cb, that's 0 0.06, multiplied by the volume of it, that's 30. So it means that when I provide you with the answer, that answer will actually, that volume that is there uh, should be in cubic decimeters, in cubic centimeters rather, uh, because the other one was also in cubic centimeters. Now, right, we said, what is the most important thing for my A? What is the coefficient there? My coefficient is 2, so there it is there, okay? My NB, right, what's my coefficient there? That's going to be 1, okay? So that is pretty much it, okay? So all that we're going to do now is just the simple mathematical gymnastics, right? So what we're going to, uh, let's just calculate, we said cross multiply, um, we're going to cross multiply there so that's uh, 0 0.028 VA times 1 so that will give us 0 0.028 VA okay and then what about our B value so that's 0 0.06 times uh, 30 uh, times 30 times 2 okay so that gives me 3.6 okay and then all that i'm going to do is just divide both sides by 0 0.028 to get rid of that but what i do on the left i need to do on this side uh, 28 so it means that my volume value so 3.6 uh, divided by 0 and I get a value of 128.57 cubic centimeters, okay? But if you remember my question, my question said, I want that volume in cubic decimeters, okay? So how do I convert from cubic decimeters to cubic, uh, um, uh, cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters? So all that I simply do means that the volume that I want it will be 128.57. Okay, how do I convert to cubic decimeters? You simply divide by a thousand. Okay, right? So if I divide that by a thousand, okay, so all that you get is 0 0.12. Uh, all right, so I don't know how many you want to carry. Uh, let me just say 0 0.129 uh, cubic decimeters okay right so uh, that's my volume value okay right so ladies and gents when it comes to titration this is it okay uh, this is what you need to note and by the way uh, for those in grade 11 um, this is what you would have to uh, know and master 
all right so in our next video what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can now apply um the other theory remember we said we've got the arrhenius theory which is what we did today and we're going to now apply the lowry bronsted theory and i'm going to show you how we calculate ph okay the ph of an acid or base but otherwise for now ladies and gents let's keep it here all right and looking forward to having another great lesson with you all right and please if you haven't subscribed don't forget to do the right thing and i'll see you next time shop shop